This is a tutorial for a fabric calendar tote. Calendars have been made with fabric, but what do you do with them after the year is passed? Here is a large collection, and there are lots of interesting pictures, and of course, they dated calendar. From one whole calendar, I cut it apart between the picture and the calendar. This one, I got a pocket that is 13 inches wide and 10 and a half inches deep to which I lined it by stitching completely around the outside edges except for a small place to turn in for both the front and back pockets. I started with two 22 by 18 inch pieces of three different fabrics, the main fabric, the underlining, and the lining. Underlining in this case was felt. Duck cloth works well. From them I cut four inch squares off the lower corners of all three types of fabrics. The straps are one inch finished and 60 inches long. They can be made by buying three and a half yards of webbing or by piecing regular fabric which would be two and a half inches wide for a half inch seam. Pin and stitch those straps 14 inches at about five and a half inch parallel to the side seams on both sides of your underlying fashion fabric. Then stitch close to the edge of the strap, removing the pins before you get there. When you reach the 14 inch mark, stop with the needle down position to pivot. Turn, stitch across, stop in the needle down position again to pivot and stitch down the other side of your strap. Here the straps are sewn to the fashion fabric and on the underlined fabric front and back tote pieces. Next, pin the pockets over the straps parallel four and a half inches from the sides and four and a half inches from the bottom. Do that with the front and back pocket. Now if you have this very special edge stitch presser foot, it's a good time to use it. Stitch the pockets in place with the little lip of the edge foot along the edge, pivoting around. Once the pockets are in place, you can then place the two right sides together, pin the side seams and the lower edge seam together. Stitch one half inch seams and when that is done, trim away the excess seam allowance of the underlining fabric. Do the same thing with your lining fabric except leave a six inch opening in the bottom for turning. When that is done, bring the seams of the bottom of the tote to the side seams and pin in the area that you'd cut away those four inches and stitch half inch seams there. That also on the main body of the tote and the lining. This buttrick pattern B5338 has an interesting option. It has an extra loop strap on the sides to hang over the store's bag holder. The loop strap is a finished 11 by 6 inch rectangle. Fold that piece to make a five and a half inch by six inch loop. Then take that loop and attach it four inches below the top edge of the sides of the tote and stitch a quarter inch seam. Raw edges are facing up. When that seam is stitched, flip the loop up and top stitch it into place. The loop straps now attach to both sides of the underlying fashion fabric and it's time to attach the lining. Pin the right side of the lining fabric to the right side of the fashion fabric along the top edge of the tote. That makes a circular seam which you then put under your sewing machine and stitch the complete loop. Now put your hand into the bag through the opening in the lower edge. 
of the lining and turn the tote right side out. Pull the lining up and smooth out where the seam is, attaching the two uppers. Then carefully move the lining to the inside and pin so that the lining stays inside and top stitch along the top edge. To stabilize the bottom of the bag, insert an 8 by 13 inch piece of plastic canvas and then go ahead and stitch that opening in the lining closed and enjoy your tote bag.